Hello, and today we're going to go over a better way, the federal system. This is the beginning of the Constitution. This is the bare bones part of um, our start of the Constitution. It's going to take us two lessons to go through uh, on, the, on the seven articles of the Constitution. Now, what is the Constitution? We talked about that the last time. It's written rules and principles under which a government is run. So the U.S. Constitution are, are rules of how our government is supposed to function. It addresses the five weaknesses. First, they knew that the government needed to be stronger. Um, they had to have uh, power to um, be over the states. Uh, it had to be able to collect taxes. These were things that they knew they had to do and create its own money. Fine. But then how is it supposed to be structured? This one state, one vote was a really big problem. No executive or judicial branches was a very big problem. So they basically solved it. Uh, first, let's talk about the executive and judicial branches. James Madison, who's known as the father of the Constitution, uh, Madison will become our fourth president, and uh, he is a very smart individual from Virginia, and he uh, comes up with a plan to make sure that nobody is too powerful. Remember, we're Americans are very, very sensitive to a very strong central government. That's what we fought against in the revolution. It uh, was too easily abused, even from a, a benevolent and usually on, on the side of good country, Great Britain. Um, yeah, it, it's, it still can hurt you. So how do you protect yourself against your own government? How does the government uh, still be powerful enough to conduct the, the business of the people but not too powerful that it's, it can uh, tread upon people's rights. So their solution was to separate the government into three co-equal branches. These are, instead of the uh, states having to work together, now you have different parts of the government that have to work together. So they had the legislative branch. This is the branch that makes the law. So if you remember, legislate, that's to make laws. These are L words, right? Legislative laws. So that's how you can remember what the legislature does. They make the laws. The executive then carries out the laws. They execute the laws. Okay, so we think in, in sports, you know, a coach tells them to play. This is what we've been doing in practice. I want you to run this play. And then it's up to the players to go out into the field and execute that play. And that's what the executive branch does. So if the, if the legislature says, okay, we want to build a bridge over here, and they put into law, they say, okay, we're, we're going to build this bridge. Then it's up to the executive branch to go ahead and build that bridge. The legislature uh, basically sets the order, and then the executive carries it out. Uh, and then we got the judicial branch. The judicial branch interprets the, the laws. Boy, it's not working for me, is it? Anyway, uh, judicial branch. I'll get it. Maybe not. Anyway, judicial branch is the branch that uh, interprets the laws and here's cases involving you know any problems between the states you know do we have a, an issue going on here that we didn't think about or uh, is this law conflicting with another law the judicial branch will decide uh, how that law is to be interpreted okay and we'll talk more about that tomorrow the bigger issues uh, for instance, when we get to, you know, so now we covered four out of the five, and then finally we get to one state, one vote. How are we going to figure this out? Uh, the small states want to keep one state, one vote. It protects them from being overwhelmed by these bigger states, and uh, so they don't want a, uh, a system that is going to give more votes to these bigger states. So how do you solve that? You know, do you have a, a government where you get more votes based on population, or do you have a government that only gives one vote um, per state? Now, my, my son is autistic, and one of the, the uh, things that he does when we say, okay, do you want Legos or do you want another toy? And his answer is two. Okay, so uh, he always wants both things. Well, I think of my son here uh, on this uh, with the... Uh, the compromise that they come up with. Should we have a, a system that, that does population, that bases the votes on population, or do we uh, just give the states an equal amount of votes? And their answer was two. We're going to do both. Okay, so the Great Compromise splits the, the legislative branch into two chambers. One, the Senate, 
has two votes per state. Okay, no matter how big or small, you get two. So there's equal representation in the Senate. The House of Representatives would then be based on population. Okay, the bigger state you have, the more votes you're going to get. So right now, California has 53 representatives and two senators. In Wyoming, they have one, house, one member in the representative because of very, very small population, but they also have two senators. Okay, so every state, no matter what, has two senators, but then in the House of Representatives, so the Senate has two senators, and then the House of Representatives is based on how big your population is. Well, then we get into the issue of, well, then how do we count these? You know, what about slaves? What do we do about slaves? Do, do they count? You know, are we going to count them in population? Because they, they you know, they're, they can't leave a state and go to another. They're stuck wherever they are. And um, so they decided, you know what we're going to do? We're going to count them as three-fifths of a person. And uh, so for every five slaves, they would count as three towards their population. Uh, interesting thing about this is that people uh, cite this as you know being racist or anything. First of all, let's uh, remember this is slaves that we're talking about. So it's not free African Americans. Free African Americans were con uh, uh, considered a whole person. And then when we also say, you know, this is what's interesting, do you want them counted as a whole person? Because if you do, then you're with the slave states because the slave states wanted them counted as a whole person. It was the free states that said, no, you can't count slaves. You know, the more you can count, the more representatives they get in the House of Representatives. So the slave states wanted the slaves counted as a whole person. The free states did not want them counted. So they, they compromised and they said, okay, three fifths. And then, you know, we'll, we'll go from there. Otherwise, you know, uh, the slave states would not join uh, this new constitution. So they had to figure out a way around this. Uh, and so three-fifths was their solution. And then finally, on September 7th, 1787, uh, they ratified the constitution. And now it is the law of the land uh, to this very day. All right, so um, biggest things here, the three branches, know them. Legislature writes laws. Executive carries it out. They execute the laws. Judicial, they interpret the laws. They judge the laws. The Great Compromise breaks up the legislature into the Senate and House of Representatives. Senate, two states, uh, I'm sorry, two votes per state. House of Representatives, the, the amount of votes depends on your population. And then the three-fifths, slaves would be counted as three-fifths as, um, as a person for purposes of counting how many representatives are in the state. And then finally, in 1787, they ratify, and the Articles of Confederation are gone, and now we have the Constitution. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.